book of Psalms. Chapter 4. Hallelujah. Was it long ago I preached to you from Psalms chapter 3? And tonight we're going to look at Psalms chapter 4. Amen. Not a real long psalm. It's only eight verses. So if you don't mind, I'd like to help you get your Bible reading in for today as well. I'll let you read an entire chapter with me this, this evening. In Psalms chapter 4, and the Bible titles the song uh, to the chief musician on Neganoth, the Psalm of David. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity, seek after leasing? But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Amen. Verse 1, hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Thou hast enlarged me. When I was in distress. Amen. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. The word there that is used for distress. Distress means a narrow or a tight place. A tight place. An adversary. Close be narrow or small, to be straight, speaks of tribulation and trouble. When I looked at that word in the Old Testament, many times it referred to an adversary, a foe, an enemy, all right? That's what it, that it, what, what it talks about, that tight place, a tight place. But then the word enlarged, it means to broaden, to make large, to make room, to open wide. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. I want to talk to you about tonight is a tight place. A tight place. How many of you are claustrophobic? Amen. I've said this before, but the fatter I get, the more claustrophobic I become. Amen. That's truth. Didn't feel like I used to be that this claustrophobic, but man, the bigger I get, the smaller places get, and I'll tell you what, it I just I fill it up, man. I'll tell you what, I fill it up. And so I just it just starts making me feel claustrophobic. You know? Closed in places. Tight spots. I don't, I don't, I don't know. You know, we live in, we live in, in America 
where um, we're used to our space. That's right. We're used to our space. You know, they say that in, in, you know, you've heard this, but in a building such as a church or something, if you constantly and continually run more than 80% of capacity in your church, you need to build a new building because you're not going to grow beyond that 80% because people don't want to be crammed in there. That's the way it is in the United States. But you go overseas and you go to another country, amen, they will cram them in a little building. You know, they will, they will, they'll pack them in there and they'll be all squished in there and they'll just get more and more and more. You go, you know, uh, you go there and you look, you try to get on one of their buses. You ever seen a bus go through Mexico or South America or somewhere? Hey, man, let me tell you what. They are hanging off the side. They're on the roof. They're, they're hanging out the windows. They're on the hood. They're on the bumper. They're everywhere hanging all over that bus. They are not worried about their space. But we, we Americans, we like our space. We like our space. We like our two foot six inches for every person, you know. And we, that's about how much we need. And we like our arm room. Hey, man, the third pew over here is looking pretty tight tonight. I saw them earlier, and I thought, boy, I tell you what, I couldn't sit in that pew. I, there's, there's seven of them in there, and that looks a little bit tight to me right there, a little bit claustrophobic. Yeah. Tight places. Tight places. You ever been in a tight spot? You ever found yourself in a tight position? David, our, our psalmist, he knew what it was to find himself in a tight place. He knew what it was to find himself in a tight spot and to be there in a place where everything was closing in around him and to feel like that everything was just, that everything was closing in around him. Tight places, tight places. I don't know, I kind of like to, I like to break out of my tight place. I don't like to, I want to have a little, have a little bit of elbow room. I don't want people crowding me too, you know. I mean, I, I just just can't handle that anymore. Just can't handle. When I was a young person, man, we could cram a bunch of kids in a car. Not not anymore, man. I want I want I want shotgun. I want shotgun, or I want to be driving. I don't want to be. I don't want people crowding me. You know what I'm saying, man? I tell you what, I'm getting to the point. I don't even like to sit in the middle of the pew. I want to sit on the end where I have a little bit of arm room. Where, okay, I don't. Uh, here a while back, me and Sister Ruth were in a venue, and there was people all around us, and people on, you know, each side of us, and I was like, man, you know, I just, they should have made these seats a little bigger, a little bigger, and I, I don't know who they expect to fly on airplanes nowadays. Hey, man, they say we are an obese society, and they put these small little seats in an airplane for an obese society to sit in. And the one thing I hate, man, is to sit next to a guy that is twice as big as I am and have to try to share an armrest with him and, and uh, to have somebody, you know, him half on me. And, and his, I, just can't, I just can't take it. I just can't take it. Man, I just can't, it just drives me, I just, uh, man, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready to pull the ripcord or the ejection seat or I'm ready to get that oxygen mask. I feel like I can't breathe, that things are closing in on me. Man, I remember that, mom and dad, you remember that trip out west when Tim was just young and the three of us in the back seat of the car. I'm on one side, I've got my window, Danny's on the other side, and he's got his window, and Tim's in the middle. He put a hand on Danny's knee, and he put a hand on my knee. That was all right as you went across the state of Missouri, or wherever, however we went. We went all the way to Yellowstone National Park and back, I'll tell you. And about after a while, I mean, it was like, ugh. That hand on my knee, that hand sitting on my leg for all that time, and it was hot, and he was sweaty, and he, you know how kids are, and you know, oh, he was sitting there with his arm on my, 
my leg, and I'm telling you what, it wasn't very long. It was absolutely driving me crazy to have that arm on my leg, and I was ready to throw him out a window. How many of you wish I would have done that? But I mean, oh my, it was, I can still now feel that hand resting on my knee for hours as we drove in a car. Tight places. I don't, I'm not good for not good with tight places. Not good with tight places. You know, in life sometimes we can't help it, but we find ourselves in tight spots. Tight places. First of all, you know, the enemy loves to try to get us in a tight spot. I was thinking about Moses and the children of Israel. They were fleeing Egypt making their way to the promised land. Pharaoh begins to pursue them, and they come up against the Red Sea. They cannot go any farther. They are blocked off. Pharaoh has shut out any, any hope of retreat and of backtracking. He is behind them, and he's closing in, and he puts them in a tight place, in a really tight spot. There was nowhere to go. They were shut off. They were closed off. And there was nowhere for them to go. A tight place. A tight place. I was thinking of David. David was in a cave hiding. And the one that he was hiding from comes into the cave to sleep. Now you think, you know, you're in a cave and it's kind of tight. But when the enemy starts coming in the door of the cave and pushing you deeper and deeper into the cave, David found himself in a tight spot, in a tight place. I remember when the, when the children of Israel, when the people of Israel had sinned against God and walked away from God and were turned to idolatry, and they, had, they were following, following after Baal, and God sent a famine for three and a half years into the land, and he called his prophet Elijah to go Amen, up to Mount Carmel, and there to, to, to pray. Amen. And, uh, oh, he put himself in a very tight spot right there. The God that answers by fire, that's the God that we will serve. The God that answers by fire. Amen. you know what? He was in a tight place right there, a very tight spot. I think of Jesus Christ when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. The place of the press. The place of the press. And it was not just that he was in a olive garden where there was where there was a press and where they would where it was known for its press. But he was under the pressure. He came into a tight spot. When all of hell was unleashed upon him in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he felt the pressure of flesh and he felt the pressure of of Satan as he was trying to trying to and battling with flesh and Satan to follow after the will of God and to do the will of God and his sweat became as great drops of blood because of the great press that he was in he was in a tight spot and there are times when you will find yourself in a tight spot closed in on all sides and many times it is something of not of our doing, but it, is a, it closes in on us, a tight place. You see, your health can push you into a tight place. Your health can begin to, you it can go in a moment. One day you can be healthy and strong, and the next day you can see that you are in a tight place. Man, calamity can come to your home and push you into a tight place. Adversity can come and push you into a tight spot, a tight place in your life. Amen. There, your finances can push you into a tight place. All it takes is one pink slip, and you find yourself financially in a tight spot. Amen. It seems like there is nowhere to go, nowhere to turn, nowhere to flee, no answer, no hope. Amen. Where do we go? What do we do? You find yourself in a tight spot. Amen. It's in those tight places. It's in those places that are tight in our life that many 
many times God proves himself and shows himself to be mighty and to be great. Amen. It's when we are in the tight spots of our life. Nobody likes to be in a tight spot. I don't think David wanted to be in a tight spot. I don't want the children of Israel wanted to be in a tight spot. I don't think that Elijah wanted to be in a tight spot. I don't think that Jesus Christ was, was relishing the tight spot that he was in in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I don't enjoy it when the enemy has forced me into a tight spot or my situations in my life has pushed me into a tight spot. But I have found it's in those tight places of my life that God has proved himself to be mighty in the tight places of my life. Hallelujah. Tight places. Amen. When I read these, when I read these, that chapter 4, amen, I see that there's a growing, there's a glowing, and there's a gladness in that chapter. There's a growing, there's a glowing, and there's a gladness. In a tight spot? He's in a tight spot? Amen. David was in a tight spot. But he says, thou hast enlarged me. Thou hast enlarged me. Thou hast broadened my way, Lord. God, thou hast expanded my, my way, Lord, because thou hast enlarged me. When I was in a tight spot and the enemy had closed in and pressed in on me. But oh God, that is when God began to do something in my life. You find that when you get into a tight spot, amen, that God will begin to work inside of you. Hallelujah. Many times it's because God can get us in a tight spot, amen, that God can begin to do something in our life. When we are, when we have a broad way, when we have a wide road, amen, many times God cannot stop us. God cannot get our attention. Amen, but it's when, amen, we get in the narrow way and the narrow spot, amen, that God begins to deal with us and we come face to face with God and God begins to work inside of us. Amen, thank God that he brings us to a tight spot, amen, where God can begin to grow inside of us and do something in our life in a tight spot man when you feel everything's closing in amen the enemy feels like they've shut off everything amen feels like we're closed off from everything how can God begin to work in such a tight place how can God work in a tight place How many of you men like to work in a crawl space? Not me. No. I'll work on a roof, but I hate going in a crawl space. I hate it. Uh uh. Especially one that's close. If you know what I mean. I don't like it. But it's in the tight place. When you have to, how can God work in a tight place? God starts working inside of you in a tight place. Where does the growing begin? The growing begins inside of you when God can get you in a tight place. Amen. God begins to work inside of you when he's got you in a tight place. Amen. It's when you're in a tight place, amen, that you begin to search your heart. It's when you're in a tight place that suddenly you begin to say, Lord, what is it? Is there something in my life, oh God, that's brought me to this tight place in my life? God, is there something about me right now? Lord, is there some impurity in my life that needs to be purged? Amen, it's when you get in a tight spot. Amen, that God is able to point his finger into your life and begin to work in your life and you can begin to grow in God because then, amen, a purifying begins to take place when you find yourself in a tight spot you find yourself in a tight place that's when God begins to work inside of you amen when you get into a tight spot amen that's when you start making fresh commitments to the Lord it's when you get in a tight spot amen that's when you start surrendering some things to God 
When you get into a tight spot, amen, when your health is failing and you feel like, amen, there's nowhere to go, amen, you start making some fresh commitments to God. Amen, it's like Hezekiah turning his face to the wall because he found himself in a tight spot. When the prophet said, you're going to die, amen, he was up against it, all right, but he turned his face to God and made a deal with God, and God reversed it. Hallelujah. Amen. And see, when you're in the tight spots, amen, that you'll make those commitments to God. Thank God for a tight spot. And praise God, let me tell you what. There's some people, some here tonight, the reason you are saved right now is because of a tight spot. That's right. Maybe, I don't know of anybody here that had a foxhole religion, but that's similar to a tight spot. I don't know if, many, if any of you had, a, had a, a hospital bed experience with God before you went, underwent the surgeon's knife when they told you the chances were not good and you were in a tight spot and you didn't know God but then you called out on God why? because you found yourself in a tight spot amen God has a way of working in us in the midst of a tight spot and maybe you're here today because God dealt with your heart when you was in a tight spot Man, none of us like the tight spot. But thank God for it. Thank God for it. None of us want to see our family get into a tight spot. But I would rejoice if that tight spot resulted in their salvation. Amen. None of us wish the calamity to come upon our loved ones. But if that tight spot will bring them to God, I say, Lord, tighten it on down. Hallelujah, because there is a growing that can take place inside of us in the midst of a tight spot. Amen, because God starts doing a work inside of us. Hallelujah. Amen, when it's tight, God starts doing a work in us. That's where we start growing. Man, we want God to push back all the enemies. Push back the enemy away from us and give us a little space. Give me a little breathing room. But God starts working inside of us. Some of you, amen, when you, it would be good, amen, for you to find yourself in a tight spot because some of you have been living in a broad way so long. Amen, you need, it might be good for you to come find yourself in a tight spot and rededicate, re-sanctify some areas of your life, re-consecrate some areas of your life. Amen, some of you need to get back and consecrate your life to God again and make some fresh commitments and fresh dedications. Some of you need to fall on your face before God and start crying out to God in a tight spot and say, Lord, amen, I believe you've brought me right here. God, where I'm at right now God so that you can work in my life so that you can do what you need to do in my life amen God thank you for a tight spot thank you for the tight spot amen because it's in the tight spot that God begins to grow inside of us that God begins to grow in our life hallelujah hallelujah I know guess you know I tell you I mean, God's blessed us, many of us, and we've got plenty, and we've got more than enough, and we've got savings, and we've got retirements, and we've got brokerage accounts, and we've got, we've got IRAs, and, and ARIs, and, and, uh, and, you know, we've got all those things. We've got it. And thank God for it, and thank God for the blessings of it. Thank God for the security of that. But maybe it would be good for us to find ourselves in a tight spot where once again we really had to put our faith in work and really trust God and really see that God does answer prayer and really see what God can do. Amen. It will help you grow. Remember when you was young. Remember before you had all this. And you had to really trust God in the midst of the tight spots. And God did a work inside of you. Amen. And to this day, you never have forgotten. Amen. That God is faithful. And that God is good. And that God provides. And that God meets every need. Thank God for the tight spot. Because He works in us. He works in our heart. 
Amen. There was a day when you didn't have two nickels to rub together. Amen. Now today you sit around and you warm yourself rubbing your $100 bills together. Amen. God help us. Amen. It would be good for us to find ourselves in a tight spot. Amen. And now we say, Lord, I'm just going to put my trust in you. And you suddenly see a growing that takes place in us. It's been a long time since some of us were in that kind of a tight spot. It's been a long time. You know, sometimes spiritually we can find ourselves in tight places as well. There's times we'll go through service after service without feeling a move of God or the touch of God. Our prayers don't seem to be being effective and we can't really seem to reach God and we see, feel like our, the heavens are brass and we just feel closed off and we just feel shut. We feel like God has just shut down on us. You ever been there? You know what I'm talking about? It's in a tight place. I've been there. I've been there and I've, man, there's been times, you know, that try, I mean, you just pray and you're doing the best you can. Hey, Amen. But it just seems like there's nothing there. It feels like God's shut down. You pray and there's, there's no results. You feel like, you know, you're just saying words. You don't, you come to church, you sing the songs, but you're just singing a song. And, you, you know, you, you're, you're just doing a tune. And you don't really feel and don't really feel God. And you feel like you're spiritually in a tight place. Spiritually, you are in a tight place. Oh, hey amen. I have found that it's in those tight places, those spiritual tight places. Amen, that I have learned that God is still faithful. Amen, and that, that God still does a work in my life. Amen, sometimes it's when I'm in those type of tight places. God is trying to get a hold of David. And God is trying to talk to me. And God is trying to get a hold of my attention. Amen, but I'm so busy and going. God has to bring me to a tight place where suddenly I get desperate before God and say, oh God, where are you? God, I need you. And that's when God can do a fresh work in my life. Amen, God starts growing inside of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God starts growing. But it's not only that there's a growing, but there becomes a glowing. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Ghost starts doing a work in a tight spot. Amen. When you're in the tight place, that's when you really get to know the might of God. Amen. For you it's tight, but oh, to experience His might. He is a mighty God. The Holy Ghost is a mighty, powerful force. Amen. And it's when those times when a glowing starts, God starts doing something inside of you. Hallelujah. God starts doing something. Amen. It's like fire shut up in your bones. Amen, but now you may be pressed on every side. Amen, you may be in a tight place, but now the Holy Ghost starts working inside of you. The Holy Ghost starts doing a work, amen, as the Spirit of God begins to work in your heart and in your life and consecrate and dedicate and purify and you lay off things and you lay off sin and God does a work in your life and now suddenly, amen, there's something that's starting to happen inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. For the glow. Amen. Something starts glowing. That's the power of God. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the move of God that you need in your life. Sometimes it don't happen until you get into a tight place. Hallelujah. Oh, God, help the power of the Holy Ghost. God, to, to flow inside of us. Hallelujah. They say dynamite comes in small packages. But I'll tell you what, you put the might of God in a tight place and just see what God can do. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. You put a chemical reaction inside of a two liter bottle. All right? And watch what will happen. It'll start putting a prince internal pressure on inside of that two-liter bottle. 
that two-liter soda bottle will grow till it looks like a ball. And eventually, it will explode because of the chemical reaction that is taking place inside of it. It will blow apart. And when the power of God starts working in your life, amen, that tight place, amen, it's all just kind of, and suddenly, amen, God is going to break forth in your life in a glorious way and bring you out of the tight place. But the, what David said, Lord, you brought me to a tight place, but you have enlarged me. You broadened my way. You opened it up. Hallelujah. Man, I, when you think about it, God can do some mighty things. Harriet Beecher Stowe, she wrote this. When you get into a tight place and everything goes against you until it seems that you cannot hold on for a minute longer, never give up. For that is just the place and the time when the tide will turn. Hallelujah. When you think that you can't do it anymore, when it's as tight as it can get, amen, that's not a time to give up. That's the time to wait and see what God is going to do. Amen, because it's at that moment when you feel like it's as tight as it can get, amen, that God does one of his most glorious miracles. Amen, if he has to part a Red Sea, amen, to show you a way out, amen, and carry you across on dry land, amen, our God is able, amen, that that's when the tide is going to turn, when it gets to be the tightest, amen, God is going to do something, amen, that's when the fire is going to fall from heaven, amen, that's when God is going to do something miraculous and glorious in your life is when, amen, things are the tightest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, God's getting ready to bring you into something glorious. God's getting ready to do something. Amen, if we just hold on during the tight place. I don't know where you're at, what you're, how tight it's getting for you. But I believe the Lord wants to bring you out. Hallelujah. Stand with me if you would tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands and let's worship him for a moment. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. God, when we're pressed on all sides, oh God. Lord, we see no way out, Lord Jesus, right now, God. Holy Ghost, I pray, would you begin to work in somebody's life? God, come down into somebody's tight place right now. God, they're feeling the tightness. They're feeling the constraint. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, God, that you would come right now. And God, let the Holy Ghost begin to do a work in their life right now. Hallelujah. 